Dvaita Gadata Srivam Sati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Can you share the screen? Yes, sir. Um, yeah. Hare now. Thank you. So we're reading mantra number seven. We're already nearly finished the purport. There's just a few paragraphs left. I'll just read mantra seven again. Yasmin Sarvani Bhutani Atmai Vabud Vijanataha Tatrako Mohaka Shoka Ekadvam Anupashyataha. One who always sees all living entities as spiritual sparks in quality one with the Lord becomes a true knower of things. What then can be illusion or anxiety for him? All right, so we're reading the purport and there's just two paragraphs left. Right, so Prabhupada explains that the, res the results of our activities, they must be used for the purpose of the interest of the Lord and not for any other purpose. Right. And Prabhupada talks about the, in this mantra it talks about Atma Bhut, Atma Bhut, which means uh, uh, Atma Bhut, and the word meaning, if you check out, the, the Atma, Atma, Atma is of course the, the spiritual spark, and Bhut, a Bhut means exist as. So if, you, if, we, if we actually want to work as a spiritual spark, then we have to use the results of our work for the interests of the Lord. Yes, it, it means that we have to understand that we're not the body, that we're spirit souls. If we are thinking we're the body, then we think about the senses and we want to serve the senses. But if we understand we're not the body, that we're souls, then we have a different, we have a different purpose in mind. And in the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, text 54, Lord Krishna also mentions about being Brahma Bhuta, understanding we're not the body, understanding that we're Brahman, that we're spirit souls. Uh, 
And so this is the important point in self-realization. We have to understand we're not the body, we're spirit souls. Then we should think, how does a soul act? Then we should understand we are tiny souls, we're tiny, we're minute atmas, we're small, very small souls. And Lord Krishna, the Supreme Lord, he's the Supreme Atma, he's the Paramatma. And it's the Paramatma, the Supreme Soul, which is maintaining all the tiny souls. The, the relationship is just like a, in a family. The father has children and he gets pleasure from the children. In the same way, Krishna as the Paramatma, he gets pleasure from all the tiny souls. But of course, it requires cooperation. Just like in a family, the children have to follow the instructions of the father. Uh, and the same way that the supreme, the, the, the living entities have to follow the instructions of the Supreme Lord. Right? The Supreme Lord, he's the Supreme Spirit, he's the Paramatma, and he's a person, just like we are, a per we are persons, he's also a person. And the Supreme Lord, he is full of, he has, he's a, he has a spiritual body, so he is full of bliss and knowledge eternally. On the spiritual platform, then there's bliss and knowledge. So, to come to that spiritual platform, we have to surrender to the Supreme Lord, Krishna. But there are not many people who surrender. The souls who surrender to the Supreme Lord Krishna are not many. One reason is it can take a long time, it may take many lifetimes. But once we get to that position, then we will be free of all misery and all 
suffering. We'll get we'll be able to get free of birth and death. So we can get we can come to the, the liberated platform. All right, so that's the finish of mantra seven. We'll go on to mantra eight. นะก็คือเราจบลงกับบทมนต์ที่เสร็จแล้วนะคะต่อไปเราจะไปกันในบทมนต์ที่ 8 such a person must factually know the greatest of all, the personality of Godhead, who is unembodied, omniscient, beyond reproach, without veins, pure and uncontaminated, the self-sufficient philosopher who has been fulfilling everyone's desire since time immemorial. คำแปลนะคะบอกว่าบุคคลเช่นนี้ต้องรู้อย่างแท้จริงถึงผู้ที่ยิ่งใหญ่ที่สุดองค์พระขวานซึ่งไม่มีร่างกายหุ้มห่
but he has a spiritual body. We are, we, we, we were forced to take a material body by the material nature, according to our karma. We did not say, I want to be a girl in Thailand or I want to be a boy in Thailand. We were forced, we were given the body. But the Supreme Lord, the Personality of Godhead, He doesn't take a body like that. He's not under the law of karma. In our body, the, the soul is different from the body. We know we have two bodies. We have the gross body, the physical body, and we have the subtle body, the mind. But for the Supreme Lord, there's no difference between his soul and his body and his mind. Yeah, his mind and body and soul are all the one and the same. Mm -hmm. So Lord Brahma, he prays. He, in his prayer, Lord Brahma describes the Supreme Lord, the body of the Supreme Lord Krishna. And he describes the body of Lord Krishna to be eternal, full of bliss and knowledge, and to have a form. Yeah. In Sanskrit we say Sat Chit Ananda Vigraha. Sat means eternal and Chit means knowledge and Ananda is bliss and Vigraha means with a form. So he doesn't, the Supreme Lord doesn't need another body or another mind to, 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 to live in this world. Right. When we give up this one body, we will take another body, another body. But the Supreme Lord, His body is different from ours. So, uh, he, he sometimes people say the God God has no form. So we should understand that he has no material form, 
but he has a spiritual form. And, and his body is very special because he can use one sense to do the activities of the other senses. Just like we walk with our legs, he can walk with his hands if he wants. And we, we, people give us things, we will take them and hold them in our hands. He, he can take them and hold them with his legs. We see with our eyes, but he can see with his hands and his feet. We eat with our tongue, but he can eat with his eyes. And so the Supreme Lord does not have hands or legs like ours. But he has different kinds of hands and legs. And with his hands and legs, he can accept whatever we offer to him. And he can run faster than anybody. So when we say the Supreme Lord is Shukram, Shukram meaning omnipotent, means he can do all of these different things. He has so many powers. And the, the Supreme Lord also has his deity form, what we call the Archa Vigraha. So the Acharyas or the spiritual teachers, they will put the deity into the temple. Because they know the form of the Lord and the deity is not different from the original form of the Lord. And they know Lord Krishna, he can expand himself in an unlimited number of forms, so he will come in the form of the deity. But he also comes, he expands himself also as Lord Balaram, and as Lord Rama, and Lord Nishringa, Lord Varaha, he has many, many expansions. So all of these different forms, they're all the same. They're all the Supreme Lord. And they're worshipped in the temple. And 
and when they're put in the t into the temple by the pure devotee, then we can serve the Lord there. We can offer our service to the Lord. The pure devotee, the Acharya, he will request Krishna or he will request the, the Lord to come into the form of the deity, to give the deity life. The Lord, the Lord is everywhere. So, if he wants to be in the deity, he can also be in the deity. But some people are very stupid, they're very foolish, they have no knowledge, and they don't know how the Lord has these powers. And when then when people are foolish and ignorant, then they think the deity is just material elements. They don't understand that it's become spiritual. So these people, they don't understand that Krishna has powers and he can appear in the form of the deity and he can change matter into spirit. And if he wants, he can also say, change spirit into matter. So people don't know this. Some people, they're just ignorant and other people sometimes they're just, they're neophyte devotees. They're still like Kanista devotee, junior devotees. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks about how some people don't have proper knowledge. And these foolish people, they sometimes criticize Krishna and they say he's just an ordinary man who came to the world. They don't know about the powers, the omnipotency of Krishna. And the Lord is also very careful not to reveal himself to these ignorant people. He, Krishna reveals himself as the person, as the devotee surrenders. According to the surrender, Krishna will reveal himself. So if someone is not surrendered to Krishna, then Krishna will not reveal him to them, himself to them. Some people are, they just, they don't know anything about Krishna or they forget everything about Krishna. So Krishna forgets them. 
อไม่คิดถึงกฤษณาไม่หากฤษณาเลยแล้วก็ลืมกฤษณาไปกฤษณาก็ลืมเขาเช่น So it's described in this mantra and many other mantras also that the Supreme Lord supplies everything for our benefit, for our use in this world. So we desire something, and Krishna provides according to our qualification. p r a b h u p a d gives an example. Just like if you want to be a high court judge, then you have to be qualified. But not only do you have to be qualified, you also have to get the approval of the authority, so, because some people, the government people, they are in charge, and they will choose who can be the judge. And only one person can be the judge, but there may be many people who are qualified. So it's not enough just to be qualified. You have to get recommended by someone for that position. Then you have to get recommended by an authorized person. So, in the same way, uh, the living entity gets enjoyment according to their qualification. But it's not only qualification. You need also to get the mercy of the Lord. So in ordinary life. Ordinary people, common people, they don't know what to ask the Lord for. They don't know what they should try to get from Him. But when we come, when the when the living entity understands his position, then he will ask to get the association of the Lord. And then, when he gets the Lord's association, then he can render service to the Lord. But mo unfortunately, most people they will simply ask the Lord for material things. So the people who ask for material things, they're stupid people. The It's described in the Bhagavad Gita that their intelligence is splayed. It's not in just one thing, but it's mixed with many other things.
And then the Srimad Bhagavatam, it also describes about these people, how they get, they're so attracted to the temporary material things. And they forget about the real aim of life. Yeah, the real aim of life is to go back to Godhead, to get out of this material world, birth and death, and to go back to be in the spiritual world. So people forget this and they try to, they make plans about how to enjoy the material world. And the Supreme Lord is so kind that He lets them, He lets people do this, He lets them try to enjoy the material world. So in this mantra, the mantra uses the, the word, Sanskrit word, yata tat yata, yata tat yata, meaning, meaning that the Lord rewards the living entities. Yeah, he will reward them according to their desires. If somebody wants to go to hell, then the Lord will allow him to do it. He won't interfere. He say, oh, go ahead, go to hell. And if he wants to go back to Godhead, the Lord will also allow it. So the Lord is described here that he is Paribu. Paribu means the greatest of all. And nobody is greater or equal to him. And we are the ordinary living entities. We are here. We are just like beggars. And we have to ask we have to go to the Lord to ask for goods, to get something from Him. When we want something, then we will pray to God to give it. And sometimes the Lord will give it, not every time, but he will, he will consider, is this person a good person? And if we're good, and if he's pleased with us, he will fulfill our desire. So we should understand we are not equal to the Lord. Just like you can see that we have to go and beg from the Lord. We beg Him. But if we were actually equal to Him, we wouldn't have to beg.
right? We, we don't want to just beg for ourselves. And we don't, we don't beg also to take me out of the material world. We want to surrender to Krishna and engage in his service. So real liberation means to go back to Godhead. But the, the materialists, they don't understand what is real liberation. The, the impersonalists, they cannot understand what is liberation either. Just like the impersonalists, they, they, they don't want anything. They don't want any, they won't ask for anything material, but they want to get liberation. They want to get out of the material world. So, the devotee, he doesn't ask for liberation. He just wants devotional service, birth after birth. And we don't ask Krishna for anything because we don't like to disturb him. Hmm. So only Krishna, only the Supreme Lord, has everything he wants, everything he needs. He doesn't need anything from anybody else. Only he is in that position. So when Krishna came to this world 5,000 years ago, he showed everyone his position, his actual position and all of his powers. Although he was only a little boy at the time, he killed these huge demons who were very powerful. But Krishna killed them easily, just like children play with toll, play with dolls and toys, and they break their doll, they break their toys. So Krishna played with these demons and he killed them, broke them very easily. So how did Krishna get this power? Did he have to did he have to lift weights so that his arms would become strong, then he could pick up the Govardhan hill? No. One time the devotee was painting a picture of Krishna and they painted Krishna's arms with big muscles and Prabhupada said, no, this is not right. Krishna doesn't have muscles. But Krishna is very, he's the strongest. Although he doesn't have muscle, he's the strongest. 
มีครั้งหนึ่งเนี่ยสาวก็กําลังวาดรูปพิชนาอยู่ก็วาดพิชนาเป็นแบบว่ามีมีกล้ามใหญ่มากพิชนาบอกโอ้ดูกล้ามใหญ่เพราะว่าบอกว่าไม่ใช่พิชนาไม่ต้องมีกล้ามใหญ่แต่พิชนาทรงมีพลังมหาศาล And then Krishna also performed Rasa Lila. He was dancing with all the gopis, and he didn't worry about the situation. He was not worried that oh, I'm a young man, and these are young girls, and some are even married, and I'm with them in the forest at night. He didn't think about that. <laughs> ก็มีโกปีที่เป็นหญิงสาวด้วยโกปีที่แต่งงานแล้วด้วยแต่พระองค์ก็ทรงไม่ได้มีความวิตกกังวลอะไรต่อต่อสิ่งเหล่านั้น So the gopis love Krishna they love Krishna more than anyone พวกโกปีเนี่ยรัก Krishna มากกว่าใครใคร And Krishna would tease them Krishna would sometimes play games with them and tease them แล้ว Krishna ก็จะส่งเล่นกับพวกเขา But Krishna appreciated their love for him, and he told the gopis, he said, "I cannot repay you for the love which you have given me." So Lord Chaitanya appreciated very much the mood of the gopis, how they were great devotees of Krishna, and Lord Chaitanya followed the mood of the gopis. Lord Chaitanya, he is also Krishna, but he comes in the mood of a devotee. So Lord Chaitanya, he was a very strict sannyasi, and he followed all the rules of the scriptures. But he said the gopis are the best devotees, and he followed their example. The Lord never gets contaminated in any way. He always remains pure. เพราะว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงไม่มีการถูกพันธนาการในในทุกระดับในทุก So described in this verse, it's first of all that he is shudham, meaning antiseptic, and secondly apapa vidam, prophylactic. Shudham. สุดามแปลว่าฆ่าพิษแล้วก็อัพพาพาดีแปลว่าป้องกันโรค So antiseptic means that if he, if you touch something impure it will become purified just by touching it การป้องกันโรคเนี่ยไอการฆ่าเชื้อเนี่ยก็คือถ้าเกิดว่าได้สัมผัสแล้วเนี่ยมันจะทําให้สิ่งที่ไม่บริสุทธิ์เนี่ยบริสุทธิ์ขึ้นได้ Just like we may have a, a, just like cow dung, cow dung can touch the, it can purify the The dirty place. เหมือนกับมูลวัวเนี่ยที่สามารถทำให้สถานที่สกปรกเนี่ยสะอาดได้ you know, There's so many contaminated things, but if you use cow dung, you put cow dung, then that will purify it. 
มีของที่มีสถานีที่ไม่ไม่บริสุทธิ์มากมายแต่ว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเอามูนวัวไปเนี่ยจะทำให้ตัวเองบริสุทธิ์ And the second type quality is that it takes a it take a, it's prophylactic, meaning it purifies the dirty place. So Prabhupada talks about how in the Bhagavad Gita ninth chapter, a devotee may be suduracha, means he's not well behaved. He doesn't follow properly. He's not strict devotee. In the Bhagavad Gita, in the Bhagavad Gita, in the Sevavan Song, the Bible says that Savokne adu means that he's a suduracha, or a person who has criticism. But in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna said, even somebody may in the beginning he's not very pure, but he can become pure because he's on the right path, and if he keeps going, gradually one day he will become pure. Because he's associating with Krishna, he's chanting the name of Krishna, and he's eating the prasadam offered to Krishna, and he's seeing the deities of Krishna, and so in so, in so many activities is connected to Krishna. So gradually he'll become purified. เช่นนี้เนื่องมาจากธรรมชาติการป้องกันโรคในการมาอยู่ใกล้ชิดกับองค์พระเขาวะก็คือเขาได้กินประสาทด้านกับคริสนาได้มาร้องเพลงให้คริสนาเต้นรำกับคริสนาสิ่งเหล่านี้ที่เขาทำอุทิศตนให้คริสนาทั้งหมดเนี่ยมันทำให้เขาเนี่ยบริสุทธิ์ขึ้น Krishna is like the sun so wherever the sunlight goes that thing gets purified และพระคริสนาเนี่ยเปรียบเสมือนกับพระอาทิตย์ที่ไหนก็แล้วแต่ที่แสงพระอาทิตย์มันฉายไปเนี่ยมันจะจะทำให้สถานที่นั้นเนี่ยบริสุทธิ์ขึ้น So wherever there is Krishna consciousness, wherever there is you get the association with Krishna, the holy name, Krishna's prasadam, Krishna's teachings, we'll get purified. แล้วที่ไหนก็แล้วแต่ที่เราได้มีกิจกรรมที่ที่มีเป็นกิจกรรมที่เชื่อมสัมพันธ์กับคริสนาแม้จะเป็น Krishna prasadam Just like the the sunshine purifies the contaminated place. So the so that's one quality, and the other quality is that Krishna is a papa vidam, that sin cannot touch him. Even if he if Krishna does something which appears to be sinful. He doesn't get any sinful reaction. Just like Krishna dances with the gopis, so people may think, "Oh, this is sinful," but no, not for Krishna. When Krishna killed different demons, so was it wrong of Krishna to kill them? No. And sometimes Krishna would tell his devotees. Krishna would have his devotees kill people. Just like 
uh, there was one demon chasing Krishna. So Krishna went up the mountain and the demon followed him up the mountain. And Krishna went in the cave and the demon followed him in the cave. And so there was one there was one special man laying sleeping there in the cave and and he'd been blessed by the demigods that he could have a good sleep. And if anybody woke him up, the demigods told him that when he opened his eyes, the fire would come out and burn that person to ashes. So, so Krishna had this 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 demon who was following up up the mountain. Krishna had this demon burned to ashes. The man w woke up. He opened his eyes, and fire came out of his eyes, and he burned the demon to ashes. And the same way Krishna helped Bhima, Bhima, the brother of Arjuna, he killed all the sons of Dhritarashtra, 100 sons, they were all killed by Bhima. So Krishna doesn't get any sin. He cannot be affected by any sin. So Krishna is like the sun. Just like the sun never gets affected by any dirty or contaminated place, but the sun purifies everything. So the sun always remains pure. In the same way, Krishna also always remains pure. So we know that the sun is material and the sun is so powerful. So we can just understand how powerful Krishna is because Krishna is not material, Krishna is spiritual. Okay, so that's the end of that mantra eight. Tomorrow, next time we'll, on Friday we'll go to mantra nine. Okay, any questions? Anybody? Yes. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, the Lama Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances or glory to Sila Bhagavan. Um, so I need to practice my English Guru Maharaj. Then I'm, I, I am trying to uh, asking you in English question. If you don't understand, then Ajana will be helping me. Okay. Um, it's referred to my experience as um, I've been to talk with um, many devotees. Uh, okay, then I found some um, a kind of many devotees who judge and insult um, about new beginner like 
sudut rasra and um, they don't need to association uh, this kind of new beginner to practice so my question is um, this kind of um, devotee is uh, stay as the which level in mantra 6 in Isho Upanishad Maharaj and how we can helping them to compassion for the others oh, now what are they doing there's they're not doing sadhana uh, um just like um like the new beginners start starting to to do sadhana Guru Maharaj, but um is look like not completely to seriously about um follow four principle or fasting ekadashi in some time because they are at the beginner to practice but um i mentioned about um some many devotee um jack them and don't need to association and um, i mean didn't support much understand me Guru Maharaj. yes well they will be kanista they'll be at the lowest level kanista there are three levels described right kanista madhyam uttama so kanista uh -huh. is a neophyte is it that's a neophyte that's a beginner stage uh -huh. but you and how about Yes, Guru Maharaj. Even ka Kanista is actually quite advanced. To be a Kanista, they have to be doing devotional service. Usually the Kanista is somebody who worships a deity. But they're not worshipping the deity, they're just new devotee. They're just coming to temple and, and maybe doing some little service here and there. Sometimes they follow, sometimes they don't. So they're not Kanista yet. They're not even Kanista. If they don't follow the four principles, then they're not even on that lowest level. Yes, and, and, and how about... Uh, Archana, that I made... you want to ex translate Yes, 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 Guru Maharaj. แต่ในมาตรฎีก็ถามนะคะบอกว่าสําหรับผู้ที่มาเริ่มปฏิบัติใหม่ๆเนี่ยคือหมายถึงคณิสตาเนี่ยหมายถึงสาวกประเภทที่ปฏิบัติตนรักษาศีลทุกอย่างแต่ว่าเขาเนี่ยทําไปเอ่อแต่ว่าเขาเนี่
But you have to stop. They have to stop these sinful activities. They can't keep doing the sinful activities and think, oh, I'm a devotee, it's okay. Krishna wants you to stop the sinful activities. Krishna won't let the devotee keep doing sinful activities and pretend that he's a devotee. Krishna will say, either you stop doing the sinful activities and become a real devotee, or what are you going what are you going to do? If you don't stop your sinful activity, it means you're not a very good devotee. ก็ใช่ว่าให้เราเลือกแล้วว่าจะหยุดทําเกิจกรรมบาปมั้ยแล้วก็มาปฏิบัติเป็นสาวกที่ดีของพระเจ้าก็ใช่แต่ทรงให
โอเคกรุมาลาบอกว่าไม่ใช่ว่ามัดยามาติการีหรือว่าเสาที่อยู่ที่ระดับสูงกว่าเนี่ยเขาจะหลีกเลี่ยงการคบหาสมาคมกับคานิสตาติการีคือเขาก็จะพยายามคบหาสมาคมแล้วก็จะให้พัมเมตากับเสาที่อยู่ในระดับคานิสตาติการีนี้ so they have to want to get the association and then certainly the Majum will give mercy to them แต่สิ่งที่มีความจําเป็นก็คือคานิสตาเนี่ยจะต้องมีความจําเป็นที่มีความต้องการที่จะอยากได้พระเมตตาจากสาวกที่อยู่ในระดับที่สูงกว่าเขาด้วย The only people the Majam doesn't give mercy to are the people who are the atheists and the blasphemers and the the people who are demons บุคคลที่มาจากมาริกาลีเนี่ยหรือสาวกที่อยู่ในระดับสูงกว่าจะไม่ให้พระเมตตาก็คือบุคคลที่ไม่เชื่อในพระเจ้าบุคคลที่ดูถูกเหยียดยามพระเจ้าแบบนี้เนี่ยแค่บุคคลเหล่านั้นเท่านั้นที่พระท่านจะไม่ได้ให้เมตตาหรือไม่ได้จะไปให้เวลาโอเคเอออาจารย์นะคะแต่ว่าพี่เออคำถามของพี่เพิ่มเติมคือเอ่อเนื่องจากว่าประสบการณ์ของพี่เหมือนกับว่าเคยเจอหลายหลายคนที่เป็นสาวกอะค่ะเหมือนกับว่าพอพอบักตี้ต่ำกว่าอย่างเงี้ยเขาจะเหมือนแบบไม่ค่อยอยากคุมหาสมาคมอ่ะพี่เลยจะถามกรุมหาราชว่าแล้วคนแบบเนี้ยประเภทเนี้ยคือเหมือนว่าเขาก็แพ็กทีสตีแต่ว่าเขาเหมือนยังไม่ฟูในมัดยมมัดยมอดิการีอย่างเงี้ยและเขาก็ไม่ถึงกับตกเป็นกานิชตาอดิการีเราจะสามารถเมนชั่นเขายังไงดีโอเคเข้าใจผิดไหมขอบคุณค่ะ so her following question is If uh, from her experience, she has seen that some devotee they are being uh, practicing in a good state, like uh, they are sadhana and everything they've been doing good, but then it seems like they choose to associate. Like when they see the beginner and all, they are not willing to talk or they are not willing to speak with. When they come to know that others are not uh, not. Uh, Up to their level or not doing very good, very well. So to those d e o t e how can we understand them? That in what level are they in, and why are they behaving like that? Well, it means maybe they are kanista, <laughs> although they they may be thinking they're not. Maybe they don't know. They don't understand. If they don't, if they don't give mercy to innocent people, then they're not m a j a m And they're definitely not Uttama. ถ้าเกิดว่าสาวประเภทนั้นเนี่ยเราดูได้เลยว่าเขาต้องเป็นสาวแบบว่ายังพื้นฐานยังไม่ได้พัฒนาอะไรถ้าสาวที่พัฒ
should be compassionate on the conditioned souls. We should try to help them. But not everybody is a Vaishnava. It's not so easy thing to become a Vaishnava. We're trying to become Vaishnavas. Okay. Thank you so much. Very wonderful um, as a Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So we have another hand up. Who is this? Bhakta Ryan. Yes. Hare Krishna Guru. Accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Um, I have a question concerning what you mentioned today about um, when when we forget Krishna, Krishna you mentioned forgets us. Um, I just wanted you to potentially clarify that because I'm I'm referencing you know the knowledge that Paramatma he would travel with us along our transmigration from body to body, like two birds on a tree, so to speak. So could you could you just speak a little bit about how? forget us or sort of become partial to us if we forget him. อืมนะคะถามว่าให้คุณพระราชช่วยอธิบายเพิ่มเติมเกี่ยวกับตรงที่ท่านอธิบายว่าเอ่อเวลาเราลืมคริสตนาในคริสตนาก็จะส่งล
หรือว่าถ้าเกิดเราอยากออกห่างจากกล้องเนี่ยกล้องก็อันเช่นนะอันเช่นนะ your your voice broke I I speak a lot okay your voice broke okay okay anyway back to Ryan got it all he he got the English so thank you thank you Guru Maharaj I I just um the question I I the question was more so around Mentioned that Krishna, if we forget him through his mercy, he allows us to forget him. Yeah. Forget him. Yeah. And, but did, he, he, he's mentioned he forgets us. He forgets us. <laughs> well. Earlier you said, him, we. If we want to forget him, he allows us to forget him. Yeah, he facilitates. He facilitates us to. If we want to forget him. He allows us to forget, but he's still with us. He's accompanying us. So long as we're here in this material world, he's accompanying us, and he knows our desires. So he facilitates our desires because he knows that ultimately we'll become frustrated and disillusioned about the material world, and then he will get the. He can arrange for us to be to get the uh, the contact. You know, we may meet the devotees, or we will take an interest, or he will give us some intelligence to understand the problems of material life. We'll think about the material world, and we'll see there's no real happiness there in the material world. That it's just all illusion. People working hard, trying to enjoy and. They fail miserably. Nobody is happy, but they pretend they're happy. So the super soul can give us the intelligence to understand the real nature of the material world and how to get out of the material world. The super soul even gives us the intelligence to understand spiritual knowledge when we hear it. If we want to understand it, the super soul can help us. He gives us intelligence. Is that all right, Prabhu? Yes, thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Vaishnavi has a question. Vaishnavi. Yes. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Sri Lal Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Uh, Guru Maharaj, we read that uh, when the uh, Archa Vigraha in the temple is an expanded form of the Lord, and when uh, it's put by a pure devotee, Lord Krishna accepts the service offered. I was thinking, like uh, recently, I uh, I was I'm worshiping a brass deity of Gauranitai, but I didn't do anything uh, to uh, uh, have the uh, have uh, Krishna in the deity like any special uh, ceremony or I didn't do anything. So I was thinking, if Krishna comes into the deity as I gradually worship for the deities, or uh, they're already in that. I was not sure, Guru Maharaj. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, there are ceremonies which you can do to install the deity officially. There are ceremonies. Usually, they're done by, you know, brahmanas. And they will make a. They will do different ceremonies and chant various mantras and so on to invite the Lord to appear in the deity. But simply by your worship of the deity, then Krishna will appear. You know, because Krishna is everywhere, Krishna is everywhere in everything. So he's also in the deity, and if you are worshiping the deity with love and devotion, then certainly Krishna is there, and he will appear there. And you're chanting Hari Krishna, right, Vaishnavi? Yes. yes you're chanting yes, Hari Krishna yes, and you do kirtan for the deity. Kirtan for the deity, and you yes, offer food. Maharaj. You offer yes. food to the deity. 
Yes, so that's all yes. service to the deity, and the, the, the Lord will appear there. The Lord's there in the deity. He's everywhere. How can you say he wouldn't be in the deity? Of course, he is there. <laughs> but just by our devotion, he will, we will see more his presence there in the deity. Okay. Yes, Guru Maharaj, now it's clear. Okay. All right. Yes. So. Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. So we'll Hare stop Krishna. here today. Thank you, Arjuna, for all your quest translation. Thank you. And thank all the devotees for their nice questions and for their association. So ask everyone, take care, stay, stay healthy. And we hope to see you again Wednesday and Friday. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Go back to Brinda Key.